Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I have Jessica Woodson on the line, and she's founder over at Modelo Management. Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, excited to get into this topic. We're going to talk about the benefits of work, virtual workspaces. But before we do that, let's get a little bit further into what you're doing over at Modelo Management. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. So Modelo Management is uh, a virtual call center. We have been in business for over four years. So mainly what we do is we provide customer service to Fortune 500 companies. That's awesome. And for um, – for those that are listening that maybe haven't used a virtual workspace or something of that nature, um, I think this is going to be a really good episode for them because, I mean, to me, I mean, we've been using um, um, services like yours for a long time, and uh, they, they've just been great for us. So let's just jump right into today's topic. So benefits of virtual workspaces. Where do you want to start with this topic? So mainly what I want to start about is how to successfully – uh, build a virtual workspace or team. So what does that look like to you? So basically what you need to do is first you need to define your workspaces um, and also establish the communication tools that you're going to be using. For instance, your employees need to know exactly how they're going to communicate with their supervisors or the management team. Also, uh, how they're going to communicate how uh, your product objectives are going to be delivered, and also helping your employees to create that professional workspace in their home so it puts them in the mindset of, okay, I'm working. Uh, It's not just I'm sitting at home. I'm actually doing uh, professional tasks. That's awesome. And I think there's some um I think there's some misconception around virtual workspaces. Um that maybe if this employee if you have a virtual workforce that maybe they're not working as much or they can't be managed as well. I mean, can you help dispel some of those myths cuz I know it's wrong. Like but I but before I started um creating that like years ago, um I had I believe some of those myths also. Yeah, so, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions because a lot of people think that or some business owners think that there's a real benefit in having a brick and mortar because you can ensure that your employees are on task or teams are on task doing what they need to do on a daily basis. But, you know, one of the main benefits is you can really, if you set up the right systems for your virtual teams, you can really keep your employees engaged. That's the main objective is making sure your employees are engaged. And by the way you do that, it's making sure your communication channels for virtual teams are appropriate for your particular team and the particular either services that you offer or the products or what you're doing with that uh, virtual team. For example, since I have worked in the customer service arena, you have to make sure that, for one, if you're going to have employees on the phones talking to customers, you have to make sure that you're going to be able to have the systems in place. If that uh, customer service rep needs help with a particular call, that they have those resources where they can reach out to someone in real time, get the answer while the customer's still on the line so that they're able to effectively manage the situation that the customer is dealing with so that your company can continue to have that positive influence in your uh, industry. And one of the ways that um, some of the tools that are out there that have been well known, um, of course, we started with Skype. Then, you know, later on, we Slack is a big tool. Now we have Microsoft Teams that's out there. And what these tools do is they allow us to communicate in real time to make sure that we take care of those needs of our customers 
while we're dealing with the customers. So that's what a lot of people think. Well, if I don't have, you know, brick and mortar call center, I cannot manage my team effectively. You can manage your team effectively as long as you have the systems in place. No, I love that, and uh, and I love that you're dispelling those myths because there's a lot of companies that have gone that route and have built big companies and have had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of employees um, around the world now at this point, and mm-hmm. it's funny that you bring up Skype because I'm like, man, Skype is so old now. It's like, it's like what, 50, <laughs> yeah. 15 years or something like that. I'm like, Skype, whoa, he's a <laughs> pioneer in this industry. I'm like, I remember Skype. I mean, it's still on my I still have it downloaded on my phone somewhere, but I'm like, man, I haven't used Skype in a while. I used to love Skype. (laughs) So, you know, you know, that was the beginning of the era of actually building those virtual teams and working virtually. Uh, They kind of set the foundation for this to evolve into something that is, whereas we're not only able to work nationally with our virtual teams, we're able to work globally. So that means you're able to get those different perspectives from teammates around the world and still feel a sense of community, a sense of your team working and building together and working as a team. And that's phenomenal. That's the difference between working a, you know, in a brick and mortar versus working in a virtual team. There's so many different benefits that I don't think we have enough time to talk about all of them. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's just phenomenal when you think about what you can do with a virtual team versus a traditional team. So, Jessica, if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, like, maybe they haven't gone that route yet and they're thinking about it and they're thinking, because normally it's not, and just to be clear, it's not, nobody's going to say, okay, my entire company, we're just going to start it out, we're going to move everybody virtual overnight. That's not necessarily going to always happen or make sense. Um, but sometimes people start with baby steps. They start, like, maybe a department or maybe a new hire, or a new role or something else, and they start building it out. I mean, what what do you think are some of the things that people should, like, that low-hanging fruit where it's like, okay, if they're thinking about continuing to continue the virtual trend that they should be thinking about? One thing you have to think about is the needs of the team. You have to know and understand the needs of your team. And the reason why I say that is the next thing. You have to build an organic communication system, whereas you're able to transfer the information that's going to be relevant for your team, that's going to be in the speed that people need it. Uh, And also, you need to build principles whereas you ensure that your employees have high morale. Because a lot of things that we come across, especially with customer service, is making sure when you have a customer service rep working virtually, you make sure that they have high morale or high integrity because you're dealing with sensitive information. That will hurt a company if a customer's information that's sensitive gets out there. So you have to think of those three core things so that you can successfully uh, be able to implement everything that you need to in order to have a successful virtual team. That's just the basics. There's so much more, but that's just the core basics. I love it. I love it. Get them hooked with that. And now for the closer, Jessica, if somebody wants to follow up to learn more about Modelo Management, how do they do it? Because we just got them started. Now they're ready for you. (laughs) So reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, You just look up my name, Jessica Woodson, and Modelo Management, and you'll be able to find me. Fantastic. Well, Jessica, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about all the great work you're doing over at Modelo Management and uh, also the topic benefits of virtual workspaces. So awesome stuff there. Um, And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on on the video. I'd love to know what kind of project and things that you're you're working on there. And uh, Jessica, thanks again for coming on the show.